more than this. Nakamuliza Simeoni unanipenda kuliko vile unanipenda? Within no time Simon was back. Basi kwa siku chache Simeoni akarejea. I pray that all those ministers who have left ministry because of trouble they will hear the sound this week and they will decide I will be back. Naomba ya kwamba wale wa huduma ambao wameacha huduma kwa sababu ya shida watasikia sauti ya Bwana na watarejea katika huduma. Jesus said something very powerful. Yesu akasema kitu cha nguvu sana. Your faith shall not fail. Imani yako haitanguka. How many of you know we do what we do by faith? Wangapi wanajua kwamba tuwafanya vile tuwafanya kwa imani? You are leading your church by faith. Unaongoza kanisa lako kwa imani? You are financing your programs by faith. Na pia unapeana pesa katika programs zako kwa imani? You are traveling by faith. Basi wewe wasafiri kwa imani? You have divine health by faith una uguzo na usaidizi wa kiungu kwa imani we have trust in god sisi tunamwamini bwana that no matter what comes against the leader kwamba ijalishikile kitakuja kinyume na kiongozi we shall stand strong sisi tutasimama kwa nguvu may that grace begin to come upon you hiyo neema ianze kuja juu yako asubuhi ya leo simon when you are converted when you are returned to me mioni ukinirejea utakapoongoka ah you go and strengthen your brethren basi uende ukawatie moyo ndugu zako may the lord empower you this week naomba bwana mungu akutie moyo wiki hii and empower me this week na pia nitie moyo wiki hii that wherever we shall go ya kwamba popote tutaenda we shall become a blessing to the people who hear us tutakuwa baraka kwa wale wote wanatusikia glory to god bwana sifiwe now i have a subject and a topic and a matter i want to bring to you asubuhi ya leo basi kuna kitu nataka nikuletee the leader among leaders kiongozi kati ya viongozi let's read some portions of scripture wacha tusome maandiko kiongozi ambaye first anakuwa. peter chapter 5 from verse 1 petero wa kwanza lango wa tano kuanzia mstari wa kwanza very amazing text by this servant the same peter huyu petero tu ameandika maandiko ya the elders who are among you i exhort na wasihi wazee walio kwenu i uh, i who am a fellow elder mimi nilie mzee and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed shepherd the flock which is among you nichungeni kundi la mungu lililo kwenu serving as overseers na kulisimamia not by compassion but willingly sio kwa lazima lakini kwa hiari not for dishonored gain but eagerly sio kwa kutaka fedha ya aibu bali kwa moyo no as being laws over those entrusted to you wala sio kama bwana wajifanyao bwana juu yao but being examples to the flock lakini muwe vielelezo vya kundi and when the chief shepherd appears you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away na mchungaji mkuu atakapodhihirishwa mtaipokea taji ya utukufu sio kauka likewise you younger people submit yourselves to your elders hivyo hivyo ninyi wazee watiini wazee Yes all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility for God resists the proud mpate kuhudumiana kwa sababu Mungu wapinga wenye kiburi but gives grace to the humble lakini huapa wanyenyekevu neema you can read all the way to verse 11 but for cause of time let me just stop there naweza soma mstari wa mpaka wa 11 lakini kwa sababu ya wakati tusimame pale The letter by Peter was not specifically to one local congregation or wa, one city. Waraka wa Petero haukuwa tu kwa kanisa moja ama kundi moja la Kristo. It's not like to Corinth or to Ephesus. This was written for the pilgrims, the brethren who are scattered after persecution. Hii iliandikwa kwa wale ambao walipigwa wakafukuzwa kwa sababu ya mateso. They went to Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, wakaenda kule tas galitia na kapelitia bithinia wakaenda asia na bithinia so the letter is a corporate letter for the church kwa hivyo waraka huu ni waraka wa kanisa lote so he talks in this chapter 5 kwa hivyo aongea katika mlango wa 5 to the elders kwa wazee these are leaders hawa ni viongozi If you look at that verse in the amplified version ukiangalia ile katika ile amplified version it says Therefore I strongly urge the elders among you basi sasa nawatia moyo viongozi na wazee katieni who are these 
These are pastors, wachungaji, spiritual leaders of the church. Viongozi wa kiroho wa kanisa. These are the kind of people who are here right now. Hawa ndio watu wamekusanyika katika nyumba hii leo. So, kwa hivyo, look at the word among you. Angalia kati yenu. Leaders among you. Viongozi kati yenu. So, let's talk about let's talk to one of those leaders among them basi tuongeleshe kiongozi huyo aliye kati ya viongozi you and i are leaders in different spheres and places mimi na wewe ni viongozi kwa vipindi na, na sehemu fulani but we are not stand alone we are among other leaders kimya desmama peke yetu tuko kati ya viongozi wengine you can almost guess where i'm going basi waelewa vile mali naelekea you cannot stand as a lone ranger hauwezi ukasimama peke yako you are not texas ranger wewe sio Texas Ranger. You can see I have interference of some movies I watched. Naona baba leo many years ago. <laughs> Leaders among others. Viongozi kati ya wengine. And I've been so concerned about this matter. Na basi nimeangalia jambo hili kwa kwa makini. First, the leader has a calling and I agree. You are called by God. Ya kwanza kiongozi anamwito na naamini ya kwamba kabisa umeitwa. And every time we think about our calling, na wacha basi niongee kuhusu mwito wako. We talk about two things. Tuongee mambo mawili. First, ya kwanza that your calling is specific. Ya kwamba mwito wako ni specially is unique. Ni specially Maybe why you work alone is because you have a specific calling. Labda kwa sababu uko peke yako ni kwa sababu una mwito specially. Jesus called you when you were in the bush. Yesu alikuita wakati ulikuwa katika nyika. He visited you and when he visited you he never visited the other person in the other bedroom in the same house. Akukutembelea vile alivyotembelea mwingine katika chumba chake. No, when he came to you he came to you specifically. Akaja kwako wewe mwenyewe. Your commission is direct from heaven. Basi kutiwa wakfu kwako umetoka kwa Mungu. I know you are a very special gift. Najua ya kwamba una karama ambayo ni special sana. In fact you have special instructions for your life. Na pia una masharti specially kwa sababu ya maisha yako. That God gave you. Ya kwamba Mungu alikupea. You are still pursuing what he told you. Bado unafuata kile alichokwambia. Praise the Lord that you have a specific calling. Bwana sifiwe ya kwamba una karama specially. That's why the body of Christ need you. Ndio maana basi Kristo atakapokuongoza. Because you have a special ministry, you have a special grace. Kwa sababu una huduma na, na, na neema iliyo special. And in fact with that special calling na sasa ile ni neema special you got gifts unayo karama na zawadi you have grace una neema you have favor una kibali and you have an anointing na pia una upakwa surely who is like you nani aliye kama wewe mohiki toyo wa monire ko is a greek phrase saying where did you see such a pride hiyo ni kigiriki yasema uliona mwingine huh? kama huyu wapi but secondly consider lakini ya pili makinika the one who called you aliyekuita that same lord huyo bwana huyo has called others ameita wengine who do you think you are sorry he has called others ameita wengine So. They have a special anointing. Wanaupakwa <laughs> special. It's different from yours. Imetofautika na yako. In fact, God is so humorous. Kabisa basi Mungu achekesha. He gives some of your friends grace in areas where you are weak. They are strong. Alipea marafiki wako wengine neema mahali wewe ni mnyonge. Wao wana nguvu. When you pray for people they die, then they pray for them they resurrect. Ukiombea watu wanakufa, wao wanaombea watu wanafufuka. I think you are beginning to get where I'm going with this. Sijua mtaelewa mahali naelekea. The same Lord who called you, huyo Bwana aliyekuita, he has called others. Basi ameita wengine. So come pole pole, come slowly. Kwa hivyo kuja mosmos. Do your flyers carefully. Fanya mambo yako pole pole. And your posters and your announcement, do them carefully. Posters zako na matangazo yako fanya kwa kwa ustadi don't show as if when they come to you they have arrived in heaven usituonyeshe ya kwamba watu wakifika kwako ni kana kwamba wamefika mbinguni the flyer you are doing it was done 50 years ago ile flyer unatengeneza sasa kuna mwingine alifanya miaka 50 imepita i'm talking to leaders among 
leaders. Ngelesha viongozi kati ya viongozi wengine. Oh my god, this part of the world. Sehemu hii ya dunia hii, Kenya East Africa. Kenya huku Afrika Mashariki. Everybody want to be a founder. Kila mtu anataka awe mwanzilishi. Everybody want to be alpha omega beginner. Kila mtu anataka awe alpha omega mwanzilishi. Stand alone, the one who has the answer which we have been looking for. Yule ambaye anajibu ambao wewe umetafuta miaka yote. The one who has the secret of the next move of God. Aliye na ufunguo wa mpito mwingine wa Mungu. Lord help Africa. Mungu saidie Afrika. And it could be true. Mm. Only that I'm here to tell you please come together all of you founders. Ingekuwa wewe lakini nimewaambia njoni nyote waanzilishi. Wiki hii. Because when you are standing alone mutasumbuka na masumbuko ya huduma njoni kwangu nyote musumbukao. Ukisimama peke yako you will be disturbed you will be troubled all your life come so that you are not troubled. That's the danger of preaching in Africa you hear Swahili phrases. Hiyo ndio mzuri ukisikia Kiswahili pia. Jesus said come to me or ye that labor. So listen. Yes, wakasema njoni mnao sumbuka. I know many defend their solo lone ranger position because of calling. Najua wengi wanasimamia ile waliitiwa kwa sababu ya mwito wao. But I've sorted that matter right now. Lakini hiyo nimeishughulikia dakika hii. We need to see a few words of wisdom. Tuone basi maneno ya busara na hekima kidogo. What I'm calling keys to be a leader among leaders. Ile ambayo naita kufunguo ya kiongozi kati ya viongozi. Number one, kwanza let's check your growth and your maturity. Basi ile kuangalia ukukuzo wako na pia kusimama imara. We need to grow. Ni vizuri tukomae. We need to mature. Ni vizuri tukomae. As we grow and mature, tukikomana kukua, we we'll discover a couple of things. Tutagundua mambo fulani. If you look at the trouble of division in Corinth, especially in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 5 and 6. Ukiangalia shida mgawanyiko la kanisa la wa Korintho, the Bible says verse 5 of chapter 3, who then is Paul, who is Apollos? Maandiko inasema ni nani basi ni Apollos? But ministers through whom you believed as the Lord gave to each one. Kama vile Bwana alikuja kwake. Na, verse 6 I planted Apollos watered chapter 3 verse 6 but mimi, God gave the increase. Asema mimi nilipanda Apollo wakati ya maji bali mwenye kukuza ni Mungu. Who gave the increase? Ni Mungu. Is it your new arrival message that brought the increase? Ni nani ambaye alileta kukuza? Ni Mungu. So we need to grow to this understanding that God in our midst is the one pushing us to the next level. Kwa hivyo tuelewe ya kwamba Mungu kati yetu ndiye ambaye anatupeleka kiwango kingine. So if you are immature, you would think it's your gift, it's your calling. It is necessary your effort. Kwa hivyo kama hujakomaa utafikiria kwamba ni wewe mwenyewe but it is god giving us the increase lakini ni mungu anatupatia kukuzwa now i know on maturity i want to say katika kukomaa nataka niseme maturity must be measurable basi kukomaa lazima kuwe na kiasi your maturity should be seen by all kukomaa kwako kuonekane na watu wote how do we see that tunaona vile namna gani When we look at the fruit of the spirit we will see how you are growing and maturing. Tukitaza matunda la roho tutaelewa mawewe unakomaa kivipi. How are you manifesting the ninefold fruit of the spirit? Unadhihirisha lile tunda la roho kwa njia gani? Maturity is also measured on how you relate and handle people. Kukomaa basi yaonyesha vile ambavyo yaonekana kwa vile ambavyo unaishi na watu. Right now you look harmless. Sasa unakaa wewe hauwezi ukagonga mtu ama ukafanya jambo mbaya. Wait until you are offended. Ngoja mpaka ukasirike. Your color will change. Unabogeuka rangi. How do you relate with people? Unashirikiana na watu namna gani? Because maturity is never measured by how much gift and anointing you have. Maana kukomaa haipimwi na karama ulizonazo ama upako. Rather by 
relational maturity lakini yapimwa katika vile ambavyo unahusiana na wengine thirdly are you willing to suffer wewe unaweza ama una, una, una utangojea uteseke when you are put under pressure are you willing to stand and go all the way ukifinywa pembeni utaweza kusimama ukateseka or you will cut corners because you are in trouble ama utapata shortcut zingine kwa sababu uko katika shida when we are mature we will be willing to go through all the way with the lord's grace tutakapokoma basi tutangojea bwana na neema yake itufikishe mbele how is our obedience basi kutikwetu kuko namna gani by our obedience we demonstrate our maturity kwa kuti basi tunadhihirisha ukomavu wetu how are we doing with the humility tunafanya namna gani na ile kunyenyekea because by our humility basi kwa kunyenyekea kwetu it will be a measure that actually we are growing and that we are mature itakuwa ni kipimo ya kwamba tunakomaa na basi tunakuwa this is a place where christ himself was hapa ndipo mahali kristo mwenyewe alikuwa philippians 2 verse 5 wa filipi 2 mstari wa 5 let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus wacha fikra hizi zilizokuwa ndani yesu ziwe ndani yenu and look at how in these couple of verses how he descended who being in the form of god na akaeleza vile ambavyo vile ambavyo alikuwa katika umbo la Mungu Kristo did not consider robbery to be equal with god basi hakujifananisha na Mungu look at it that made himself of no reputation lakini akajishusha mwenyewe sana a mature minister is not concerned about their reputation. Yule ambaye amekomaa mhuduma haangalii vile watu wanasema kumhusu. No necessary that you build your brand. Sio ya kwamba basi ujitengeneze mwenyewe. But he took the form of a bond servant who is a slave. Sio kutengeneza jina lako mwenyewe lakini uwe basi yule ambaye anafuata mwingine. So as a slave of Jesus Christ. Kama mtumwa wa Kristo Yesu. You are willing to go all the way because you know God is on your side. Basi utangojea uende mpaka mwisho kwa sababu unajua Mungu yuko na wewe. That's why he came in the likeness of men. Hivyo basi ndivyo alikuja katika umbo la mwanadamu. Glory to God. Bwana atukuzwe. And being found in appearance as a man na basi akaja mbele ya watu the bible says he humbled himself na pia akanyenyekea mwenyewe and became obedient to the point of death na akatii mpaka kwa kifo even the death of the cross ata kifo cha msalaba so we are growing and maturing to the stature of christ and look at the pattern and example he set for us kwa hivyo tunakoma tukimfuata yesu tazama mwelekezo ametupa most teams end up splitting because of the immaturity of the leaders among them kundi nyingi zinagawanyika kwa sababu ya ile kutokomaka ya viongozi wanaoaongoza yeah another key funguo nyingine is a need to have biblical understanding basi inatuelekeza katika kuelewa kwa biblia how god works vile mungu anafanya kazi regarding leadership kwa sababu ya uongozi na When it comes to leaders among leaders, ikija kwa kiongozi kati ya viongozi, we need to understand what the Bible says. Tuelewe vile Biblia inasema. And look at the patterns that the Bible has given us. Na tazama umbo ambao Biblia imetupatia. For instance, tazama the Jesus principle of sending two by two. Kadi Yesu ilikuwa kuwatuma wawili kwa wawili. Mm. Try to send two people. Jaribu kutuma watu wawili. You know <laughs> two men were sent to another foreign country from here. Watu wawili walitumwa katika nchi ya kigeni kutoka hapa. One preached, the other one I think prayed for the one who preached. Mmoja akahubiri mwingine akamwambia huyu ambaye alikuwa anahubiri. And the offering came. Na sadaka ikafika. So uh, how will it be shared? Kwa hivyo sasa itagawanywa namna gani? No I hear there was a major difference in that country. Nasikia kwamba kulikuwa na tofauti kubwa sana katika ile. When they came back they were not talking to each other. Walipokuja hata hawakuwa naangalia na kwa uso. So I know why we're talking on these things because uh, <laughs> Jesus never sent one man guitar. He sent two. Yesu hakumtuma one man guitar, alituma wawili kwa wawili. And when two are sent na wakati walitumwa one of them is leading the other one mmoja anaongoza mwingine one of them is the one who will introduce the other to the host mmoja ndiye anamtanguliza mwingine kwa mgeni ama amawapa mali pa ugeni because of competition you can't stand both of you and do a chorus 
kwa sababu kwa kushindana mwezi mkaimba wimbo moja there must be somebody who step ahead of the other lazima pana na mwingine ataenda mbele ya mwingine i know you are always ahead najua ya kwamba unapenda kuenda mbele wewe sana i know you are the one who closes the meeting tena najua ya kwamba unapenda kufunga mikutano na maombi kubwa in fact you close the church on sunday until they can't come in the middle of the week because una... you, you closed last sunday unafunga jumapili hata kwa wiki hakuna ibada zinaendelea maana ni wewe a leader told us pastors stop closing the church with a word of prayer i now close the service because the, the believers know you closed so they will not come for midweek services kwa hivyo mchungaji usifunge tena maana wasikie umefunga hata kuja wikini in the next meeting you are first of all to open with the prayer wiki jao lazima wewe ndio unafungua na maombi because you closed last maana ni wewe ulifunga jesus sent two by two yes waliwatuma wawili kwa wao must learn to submit to one another lazima waelewe kunyenyekea mmoja kwa mwingine one allows the other to go ahead mwingine anaenda mbele mwingine anabaki nyuma look at the principle of god the father the son and the holy spirit tazama ikadi ya mungu roho baba na pia mwana working together wakifanya kazi pamoja genesis 126 let us make man in our image Mwanzo inasema kwamba wacha tuwafanye mwanadamu katika umbo letu. All over in scripture. Katika maandiko yote. Our God is both a father. Mungu wetu ni baba. He is also a son. Pia yeye ni mwana. Our God is also the spirit. Na pia yeye ni roho. There is a lot of interplay and working together. Basi wanafanya kazi kwa pamoja. The oneness and the unity. Wakiwa katika umoja. Look in Matthew 28 on the great commission Matayo 28 wakati tulitumwa it wasn't given to an individual haikupewa kwa mtu mmoja the great commission is given to the corporate church basi ile kutumwa ilipewa kwa kanisa lote all authority mamlaka yote both in heaven and earth Jesus said, has been given to yes, me wakasema, in verse 19 the bible says Atika, mstari, wa tiku, mina, go tisasema. make disciples of all nations ndeni muwafanye wanafunzi mataifani this is is a corporate sending he basi ni kutumwa kwa pamoja yes individuals will take responsibility kabisa watu wataenda mmoja leaders will step out to do this commission na viongozi watakuwa na jukumu ya kwenda but in the context of team ministry lakini katika kundi na itikadi za kundi the commission that was given to us was given to the corporate team the disciples of Christ the apostles. Kutiwa wakfu kwetu kulipeano kwa mitume wa Kristo Yesu wote. I like the Leviticus 26 verse 8. Basi katika mlango wa 26 this principle is important we need to have this understand. Tuelewe kabisa na tumakinike. Five of you shall chase a hundred. We watapote watapiga 100 and a hundred of you shall put 10000 to flight na basi 100 wata, watawapiga wengi zaidi your enemies shall fall by the sword madui wako wataanguka now five ya tano shall chase 100 watawakimbiza 100 a hundred 100 shall chase if you use mathematics kitumia hesabu do you remember Five, watano equals a hundred. Watakimbiza mia moja. The line below, a hundred. Na sasa mia moja. Shall chase how many? You remember that question? Watakimbiza wangapi? Kumbuka ulisoma. A hundred divided by five. Mia moja ukiondoa kwa tano. Times a hundred. Ujumulishe na uongeze kwa 100. I know you know the Bible. Do you know mathematics? Najua unajua Biblia lakini unajua hesabu. So that is 20 times. Kwa hivyo hii ni 20,000. Na 100 hiyo ni 2000. But biblical mathematics doesn't say 2000. Lakini haikusema 2000. It says 10,000. Ilisema 10,000. Wow. Oh my God, the anointing you have. Upako ulionao. Put it bumper to bumper with a team. Weke umoja kwa moja kwa kundi. And you go into a, an assignment in the spirit. Na inaenda katika a uh, kazi ya kiroho. You will see movement you have never seen before. Utaona miondoko haujaona pale mbele. Listen to me. 
tazama prophetically katika unabii god has been raising the fivefold ministry mungu amekuwa kiinua ile 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 utendakazi wa watu watano listen to me tazama this is one of the times hii ndio wakati mmoja in the history of the body of christ katika historia ya mwili wa kristo other than when the church was born katika kanisa lizaliwa This is the only time we have five fold anointings operating on the earth at the same time. Hii ndio wakati tunahuduma wale tano wakifanya kazi kwa nsali moja wakati mmoja. In church history, katika historia ya kanisa, we have had selected moves of God here and there. Tuna miondoko ya Mungu hapa kule, evangelistic move. Ya uinjilisti teachers rising up na pia wafunzi wa kainuka prophets rising up in certain regions na pia wa kainuka wakihubiri but right now kini sasa we are prophets moving around tuna manabii wanaenda chain in apostolic ministry pia wakiwa na huduma ya evangelistic ministry is going on na pia injilisti tunaendelea shepherds are taking their places pastors na pia wachungaji na wafunzi wanasimama teaching is going on na pia ufunzi unaendelea and according to Ephesians 4 verse 12 fika Ephesians 4:12 they are all prepared in the saints what for the work of the ministry sababu ya huduma we are stepping into a new season tunasimama katika mwingi mpya tosha zata we are stepping into a place tunaingia katika mwingi there is a shift ladies and gentlemen kuna muondoko we are moving from the one powerful anointed minister tunaondoka kutoka kwa mmoja aliye mwagio mafuta the corporate body pia kaingia katika kundi people that are equipped watu ambao wamepewa that are prepared for ministry you are going to see things you have never seen tutaona vitu atayeona i want you to hear me nataka unisikie when covid came wakati covid ilikuja the holy spirit spoke to me and said mtakatifu akaniambia after corona baada ya corona there is a global awakening coming kuna uamsho wa dunia yote ujao this one is going to be special na sasa itakuwa special the whole night the lord showed me usiku wote bwana akanionyesha and i saw meetings upon meetings that could not fit in any hall na nikaona mikutano baada ya mingine ambayo ingekaa katika nyumba i saw people who are nameless titleless nikaona watu wasio na vichu i saw people who had never been known before watu ambao hawana vyeo na wajulikani they were leading movements in the hapes walikuwa wanaongoza miondoko ya Mungu i believe ladies and gentlemen amini watu wa Mungu corona is behind us corona iko nyuma yetu the season has shifted sasa majira yameondoka the time has come wakati umefika this is your opportunity hii ndio wakati wako it doesn't matter what you have experienced before you are going to be activated utamshwa opportunities are going to come your way fasi zitapatikana there are open doors you never seen before mungu ambao ukuona kule mbele they are opening before you itafunguka mbele And I say to you in the name of Jesus. This is the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to stand shoulder to shoulder. Tutasimama bega kwa bega. That's why we have to speak to the current leaders. Sio maana tuongeleshe viongozi wa sasa. Learn to stand among other leaders. Tusunze kusimama na viongozi wengine. It is not about you now. Sio kwako wewe sasa. It is about the Lord. Sasa ni kwa Bwana. May your ministry shift. Tuma yako isame na ivuke. Until they stop saying. Paka waache kusema. The God of Peter. Mungu wa Petero. I mean they begin to they stop saying Peter the man of God. Waache kusema Petero mtu wa Mungu. But God the God of Peter. Lakini waseme Mungu wa Petero. They will not just see you. Hawatakuona wewe. They will see your God. Wataona Mungu wako. I speak from the apostolic house. Yes, ma- by the anointing of the holy ghost somebody that came into this service god is picking you up is placing you in the middle of his harvest in this last day may your heart be prepared to learn to stand among leaders mm. oh jesus Mm. In Acts 13 when the Holy Spirit came to jump start so of Tarsus. Matendo ya mitume 13 wakati Roma mtakatifu alimjia Sauli wa Tarsus. Certain prophets and teachers were ministering to the Lord. Manabii na viongozi na wakufunzi walikuwa na muabudu Mungu. Then the Holy Spirit said. Alafu Roma mtakatifu akasema. Separate to me. Sasa basi nigawanyie. Not soul. 
sio Sauli but Barnabas and Saul lakini Barnabas na Sauli those two have got to know how to stand among each other wale wawili walijua kusimama kati ya viongozi wengine I know later they disagreed because of the cousin John Mark. Najua baadaye basi walikosa kuelewana kwa sababu ya John Mark. But they had already dealt with Ba Jesus in Acts 13 verse 9. Lakini tayari walikuwa wameshughulikia yule Ba Jesus kule 13 mstari wa 9. They had already commanded him to be blind for a while. Walikuwa wamesema awe kipofu kwa muda. Before Paul and Barnabas separated. Kabla Paulo na Barnabas waachane. They had already done exploits walikuwa wamefanya mambo makuu and even because they separated because of John Mark hata kwa sababu ya John Mark immediately act 16 before Paul could do another operation kabla Paulo afanye kazi nyingine ama operation nyingine he got hold of Timothy and brought him because he can't do it alone akamshika Timotheo akamleta karibu kwa sababu angefanya peke yake and Timothy became the replacement for John Mark na Timotheo akawa ndiye amemuondoa John Mark so that now is Paul and Timothy and Cyrus and all the others ili ya kwamba basi wae John Cyrus na Timothy na wengine we don't know hatujui who went with Barnabas ni nani alienda na Barnabas we never heard of him again hatukumsikia tena because he was not able to stand sababu hakuweza kusimama among leaders kati ya viongozi hey. hmm. well if you don't learn a lesson from men of god usipobasi jifunza kutoka kwa watu wa Mungu and from human vessels that god is using by the anointing na vyombo ambao Bwana amemwagia mafuta anatumia if you don't learn from men and women of god kama hautaweza kujifunza kutoka kwa hiyo mtu wa Mungu on this biblical principle katika kadi hii ya biblia let's go to proverbs 6 and see who can be your new teacher wacha twende kwa mithali sita basi uone ni nani anaweza kuwa mwalimu wako hasa mstari wa sita go to the ant yeah. nenda kwa siafu you lazy preacher Sorry, I'm a new sluggard. Consider the ways, his ways and be wise. Angalia njia zake. Now we'll be taught by what? Na utafunzwa na hao. The little ant. Yule siafu which having no captain. Ambaye hana kiongozi. Overseer. That's bishop. Hana bishop, hana overseer, hana kiongozi. Or ruler. Ama hana mwelekezi. They are able to still do their work. They provide her supply, provides her supply in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. Ya ukusanya chakula wakati wake wa mavuno chakula cha wakati wa jua. When you look at those little ants passing down there, you may just ignore them, but let me tell you. They can smell the change of seasons when you are still struggling with one or two shaka hollering and you are not hearing nothing. Kiangalia wale chungu basi fastings you know. <laughs> Utaona vile wanafanya kazi pasipo kiongozi ama mwelekezi. Listen, tazama. I've shared two keys. Nimeshiriki funguo mbili that will help us as leaders among leaders. Ambazo zitasaidia kama viongozi kati ya viongozi. The need for us to keep on growing and maturing ili ya kwamba tuendelee kukomana tuendelee kukua. so that we can stand appropriately ili ya kwamba tuelewe kwa kabisa and secondly ya pili the need to understand the word of god having a biblical foundation tuelewe neno la mungu tuwe na msingi wa biblia because of time kwa sababu ya wakati i'll just mention quickly a few others then i'll pick it up before jesus returns nitataja tu kati ya mingine alafu kabla yesu arudi nitataja hiyo nyingine Number three, we need to learn submission to one another. Ya tatu tunyenyekee mmoja na mwingine and it's interplay relationally. Katika basi kufanya kazi utendaji kazi wa kipamoja. Somebody say submission. Submission. Mtu aseme submission. How many of you know even in a marriage the Bible says submit ye to one another? Wangapi wanajua kwamba hata katika ndoa bila nasema tunyenyekeane mmoja na mwingine? I know in Africa the woman you better submit to the man. Ndio Afrika basi mwanamke anyenyekee mwanaume ndio anasema. But women normally don't submit here. Lakini nasikia kwamba kina dada hawanyenyekei until the man activate love. Mpaka yule mwanaume aamshe upendo. Learning submission. Tujifunze kunyenyekeana. 
and how that plays out relationally and i mentioned a couple of things on that na vile mba inafanya kazi kwa pamoja you will be able to stand among leaders for many years if you are a submitted person from the heart utaweza kusimama kama kiongozi miaka mingi ukiweza kunyenyekea moyoni because you are able to design men and women maana unaweza ukabasi ukajua makini kwa kwa umakini vile watu walivyo especially those that god brings your way sana sana wale Mungu anakuletea fourthly appreciate also this is the balance rankings in our midis yanne basi ni vyema ujue na uweze kuelewa kuna wale walio juu yako na wamepewa vyeo na Mungu rank vyeo in a building where stones are being used wakati mawe yatumiwa ya, ya kufanya ujenzi on a wall you have a stone that relates with another stone above it kwa ukuta kuna jiwe lingine ambalo limekaliwa na lingine there are also stones that are the same level with that stone na pia kuna mawe ambayo imekaa pamoja katika usawa na lile there are stone below it na pia kuna ile jiwe ya ya, ya pembeni those three are playing different roles in your life yale mawe tatu yafanya kazi specially sana ya muhimu katika maisha yako a stone among stones jiwe kati ya mawe when it comes to those who are above you there is a way in which you recognize the rank in the spirit kija kwa wale walio juu yako kuna vile ambavyo unawaheshimu na kuwafuata among your agents and your peers at the same level you behave in a different way kati ya wale ambao mko katika umri mmoja na pia katika uh, cheo kimoja unafanya vile ambavyo unataka but honor must be there regardless lakini heshima pia iwe katika utendakazi wako the other keys that are necessary fungua mwingine ambao basi ni muhimu exposure and experience is necessary for leaders ile kujua mambo yafanyavyo na pia utendakazi wa kimakini basi ni ya muhimu exposure ile kujua mambo ifanyavyo namna gani one of my friends said rafiki yangu mmoja akasema every time you go on a mission trip kila wakati tukienda katika umishoni there are things you learn which you can never learn at home kuna vitu unafanya unajua ambao hauwezi ukajua ukiwa nyumbani and you are worth three credit hours katika masaa matatu you in the in the university in college they give you three credit wana, credits oh, for kati, katika chuo kikuu wana your course katika chuo kikuu katika ile masomo unasoma wanakupatia masaa matatu three credits wanakupatia credit ya masaa matatu so for every trip there is some exposure you get kwa hivyo kwa kila safari kuna ile kujua kitu ambapo haukujua through experiences there is something that you learn kuna vitu ambavyo unakumbana navyo na mambo unajua ya muhimu. Let me tell you. Wacha nikwambie. I have been in this nation for many years. Nimekuwa katika taifa hili kwa miaka mingi. Most of the people that are always striving, dividing and causing so much trouble in the ministry, watu wengi ambao wanafanya kuleta uganyiko katika nyumba ya Mungu, they haven't been exposed to much. Hawajakuwa na kujua vile mambo yafanyavyo kule nje. You need to go to another nation. Uende taifa lingine. And then you meet pastors you have never known churches with the names you have never heard about. Unakutana na wachungaji ambao haukujua majina yao, haukujua kanisa zao. Then they are mercy on you and they tell you to preach. Alafu wanakuambia uhubiri. They are not sure what you are likely to do in the middle of the message. Hawajui kile ambacho utafanya katikati ya ujumbe. But they trust you. Lakini wamekuamini. And somehow you successfully do the service na sasa kabisa unatimiza ibada na unamaliza they are so blessed wamebarikiwa sana you go to another place naenda mali kwingine a different treatment na pia unapokelewa una, una kivingine you go to another church naenda kanisa lingine you see another type of woman or man of god unaona mtu wa Mungu hakika ama mume you go to another place naenda mali kwingine oh you learn something different basi unasoma kitu kingine you go to another conference naenda katika osha nyingine and as your growing and maturing and as you are being exposed na ukikua na kuendelea kukomana kwa kujua mambo mapya it humbles you and helps you to honor other men of god 
inakunyenyekeza na inakusaidia kuheshimu watu wengine wa Mungu because God has many people kwa sababu Mungu ana watu wengi sana mm. how good did Jex he said did Jex akasema every man of God who is called is actually anointed kila mtu wa Mungu aliyeitwa amemwagiwa mafuta the difference is tofauti ni exposure kujua mambo mengine where have you gone wewe umeenda wapi who have you met umekutana na nani you need to know and honor your cluster vizuri ujue na uweze kuheshimu kundi lako in isaiah let me just close with that verse praise god the preacher is closing chani hubiri kwa nimalize Isaiah 65 verse 8 I hope it's there they haven't moved it Isaiah 65 mstari wa 8 That says the Lord Asema Bwana Mungu As the new wine is found where basi ile uh, divai mpya ambayo ina divai inapatikana wapi in a cluster and one says Asema do not destroy it usiharibu for a blessing is in it kwa sababu baraka iko ndani yake the new wine is found where napatikana wapi pastor you don't get new wine from one little bottle sorry what is it called one little grape haupati katika tunda moja tu you need several unahitaji matunda kadhaa then you can crush them together na ukaweza kuyafinya then you can fill your 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 gallon of new wine basi takupa kibuyu cha divai yako no the cluster You Jua, belong. Kikundi chako ni kigani. The family you belong. Familia yenu ni gani? The apostolic company you belong. Wewe ni katika apostolic company gani? The new thing God is doing. Kile kitu kipya Bwana anafanya. Is in that company. Iko katika lile kundi. Is in that cluster. Iko katika lile kundi. A blessing is in it. Baraka iko ndani yake. And no one can destroy it. Kuna mtu anaweza kuyaribu. Because there is a command in the spirit. Kwa sababu kuna katika ulio You can destroy this wezuka imaliza no and identify your cluster chua familia yako ni gani so that you can stand as a leader among leaders ili kwamba usimame kama kiongozi kati ya viongozi